So how do you think the debate went tonight? I feel good about it. I was able to get a lot of my points across. Uh, we covered a broad range of topics, and I think it went very good. Okay. And so you all talked about a variety of things, education, infrastructure, things like that. Another thing was um, the state minimum wage. Um, some of you all said that you didn't think that it should be increased, but you all are also losing people to neighboring states. So yep. do you all think that you all shouldn't? You know, should raise that. Rate. If we were to raise the minimum wage, it would put us at a, a situation where we're less competitive with states around us. The free market determines what wages should be for a certain position. And when we start raising the minimum wage, all it does is create inflation. Because if a uh, perfect example, if you go to a place like a fast food restaurant, if you raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour at a fast food restaurant, then it's not going to be a dollar menu anymore. It's going to be a two dollar menu. And everything's going to cost more money. And so it's not actually going to help the people that you're trying to help. It's just going to create a situation where those companies are probably going to innovate and they're going to replace working people with machines. And then people lose jobs. And so you have less people working. The free market will determine and help people get the wage that they deserve by simply allowing it to work. You took a few hits at, at Lieutenant Governor Reeves tonight. How important was that for you to try to help voters get beyond what they're hearing just in ads, having this moment to, to be side by side with him? Uh, it wasn't a focus of mine. It just came out because the facts are the facts. Uh, there is an eight-year uh, lieutenant governor record that people need to look at. Uh, he's had eight years to do a lot, and he has done very little. Uh, he could have done a lot more. Uh, he did not work well with the governor and the Speaker of the House and blocked a lot of uh, economic progress. Very conservative bills were killed under his direction multiple years in a row. The heartbeat bill is a perfect example. He killed it seven years in a row by sending it to a committee chaired by one of the most liberal senators in the entire House, uh, Senate. Uh, and then waited till right before an election year to pass it to act as if he was somehow pro-life and really had had that in his intention all along. But it's just a ploy to get reelected, and I think people need to start looking at the facts. You talked a lot about changing the tax structure. How realistic is that plan if you're elected? It's very realistic. I've had conversations the last four years with members of the House, the Senate, Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, and everybody in between. And everybody knows that what we're doing is just not working. If we continue to do the same thing over and over and over again, that's insanity. That's the definition of insanity. We have to try something new in Mississippi and be innovative. And all we have to do is simply look at states that are doing it right and have a booming economy. And I like to look at Tennessee, Texas, and Florida as perfect examples of states where people are flocking to. People are leaving to go to those states because their economy is growing. And the reason why is they have a tax structure that's based off of use and sales taxes where people pay as they go. And that as the economy grows, the revenue keeps up with the growth of the economy. And as the economy slows, the revenue slows so the government cannot outpace the economy. Your talk about the uh, Graham rule came up in this debate tonight. Yes. Uh, it's kind of a male perspective, a male viewpoint on this. But how does that change if you're interacting with, with uh, as a governor, with a woman governor or woman sure. head of state? Uh, you still don't have to have a closed door. You can still have a private conversation in a room with a door open or with a, a glass window on the door. It's a policy that preachers all over the nation follow, that executives and high-level corporations follow, both male and female, that Billy Graham himself followed, that Vice President Mike Pence followed, and it has not stopped anybody from advancing in their career. It has not stopped anybody from con conducting business. It's simply a vow that I put before everything else in my life. I put God first, I put my wife in the vow that I have to her second, and everything else comes after that, that I can do what needs to be done professionally with an open door policy or with a third person in the vehicle when we travel, which the governor is always going to have. They're going to have security detail. They're going to have a driver. And so that's not going to be an issue. What executive follows that policy? There's a lot of executives all over the nation. There's a lot of governments. I'm not going to start naming people by name, but there's a lot. If you look at their handbook, their policies, if you look at even government policies in a lot of cases, the police departments even have a lot of the same policies where they don't want to have one male, one female together, that there has to be a third person there. Uh, it's, a, it's a very common policy that's still practiced all over the nation. How, how, do, you see this, how do you see this primary playing out? You want to force it to a runoff, I assume, and then, then kind of see what happens. Just walk us through with, well, this, with this kind of momentum with the Billy Graham rule. Yeah, I think there's tremendous momentum right now behind our campaign, and I think it's going to be a very surprising day for many out there when the votes come in on August the 6th. I think we're very highly likely to see a runoff. Uh, I feel very confident and comfortable in that I may uh, be one of those first or second people in that runoff. And going forward from there, it resets completely. Uh, big don donations and uh, big money is not going to matter as much in a runoff because the people that show back up three weeks later in a runoff election are going to be dedicated voters that are informed for the most part, and they're going to be there to vote for a candidate they believe in or against a candidate that they're not happy with.
Are there any topics that did not come up tonight that you, you'd like to see addressed? Well, we covered a pretty wide range of topics. Nothing comes to mind right now, but something may later pop up. Yeah, thank right. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank y'all. Tell us about how you felt about tonight, if there were any topics that you didn't get the chance to discuss, or if you felt good about having the opportunity to, to be alongside both of your opponents tonight. Uh, this, was a, this was a great first uh, opportunity that all three of us were together, and I think the public probably lost something not having uh, all the candidates for the previous two debates. Uh, I would have really liked to have addressed uh, career and vocational education in high school. I think that's, that's the... That's the economic generator that we need to focus on right now. Our workforce participation in Mississippi is 55%, which is the second lowest in, in the nation. We need to improve on that. We need, we need to stop the, the brain drain. Between 2010 and 2016, we lost 35,000 people in Mississippi. That's equivalent to the population of Tupelo. We've lost population three out of the last four years. Uh, I want to see exciting programs like it, they do at Ingalls. Uh, they just had 41 high school seniors uh, that had externships that are trained. They had a signing day, like a football signing day, going to college with their parents, and it gave them the hard hats. They're starting at 44,000 a year. We've got to have good paying jobs for our, our, our high school students. They're not wanting to go to college, and that's about two thirds of the students. So that's what I want to focus on in my administration. We've got to get the teacher pay up. We've got to have a meaningful, experience in high school to prepare people for good paying jobs. Mr. Foster just talked about the possibility of a runoff. How likely do you feel like that there's going to be a runoff and, and where do you see the campaign shaping up right now? Uh, I, I'm, I'm ready for the runoff. I, I look forward to the runoff uh, and it's, it's, I, I think that will favor uh, Bill Waller. You talked about the Gulf Coast economy in this debate. That was a, a significant part of this. Uh, but near your, the end of your comments, you said you wanted uh, to, to assess the damage. Uh, you want a new big plan. But you said no interchanges in Jackson. The money would go to the Gulf Coast. What, what did you mean by that? Well, the, the BP settlement, uh, they spent $25 million in Metro Jackson. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, the money was supposed to be for the, the, the lower six counties. Uh, if I was on the coast, I'd be incensed about it. Uh, the money for the coast needs to stay on the coast. Uh, they've got uh, a critter, all the shellfish industry is destroyed, the oysters, the shrimp, the crabs. Uh, we've got an economic catastrophe uh, that, that would make BP blush. This, we've got to address this water situation. We've got to have a new master plan. We've got to look at the, stru the structures uh, controlling this flood water, Bonnie Carey, Morganza. These, these are almost 100 years old. We need, we need new solutions to the water. We don't need to destroy all the ecology off the coast. We don't need to destroy uh, the best uh, seafood, the Mississippi Sound, which is the best seafood production area in the United States and one of the top in the world. Uh, on a few occasions, we heard Lieutenant Governor Reeves reference, let's get the facts straight. He seemed to question your math on a few things, but you came back to talk about the surplus that was that was existed in the legislature even right. after all this. Can you talk a little bit more about that, especially your response to him saying that he questioned your math? Well, it's... Uh, it's very easy. The math is simple. The surplus is there. We can we can we can bank on that next year for the teacher raise. Uh, with respect to the, the, the gas the gas the tax swap for the for the small moderate uh, user fee uh, for gas versus income tax, our economy is going to grow. If we get if we have the money circulating with the teachers, I want to see some uh, debt repayments. I want to see some scholarships. Uh, if we get the health system, the health system, the the Mike Pence. Uh, Medicaid reform would bring a billion dollars into Mississippi, 115 hospitals, over 60,000 employees with no tax uh, required, no money required from the state of Mississippi. You add that with our road program. We start, we start building, we're repairing our 400 bridges. We start uh, overlaying and new surfaces for our, our 5,000 miles of roads that need work. Uh, that money turns over seven times and nearly all the money awarded in the heart highway contract goes in the highways uh, because the infrastructure, MDOT, the plans are already there. Uh, I, I predict and, and I think with, 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 with relative with certainty that our economy is going to go fast enough to absorb uh, whatever these tax benefits are and I, I predict that our economy is going to grow. Since 2009 we had the slowest growing economy in the nation. 2% gross domestic product versus 22% for the United States 
or 10% for Alabama. Uh, we need to do some innovative things. We need to get money. People need to be excited about Mississippi. We need to cut some ribbons on some new roads. We need to have uh, our, our certified nurse assistants get higher pay. We need to start new programs in our high school. I, I can see the multipliers of, of, our, of our economy growing just like other states and the opportunities increasing. And, I, and, and there would be no problem uh, if, if, no problem absorbing that with, with, if we can put the economic plans in place that, that I am supporting. But you're talking about spending the rainy day fund next year for the teacher pay raise? Absolutely not. We won't have to touch it. The, 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 the surplus is, uh, is something over close to $500 million. And, 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 and Bobby, we need to make it a priority. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the legislature to uh, pass that in February uh, before the other programs. But right now, our house is on fire on teacher pay, and we need to address it. You never, you never, never answered the voucher question. Are you, I mean, directly? Are, are you in favor of spending vouchers past special education? Uh, no. I mean, I didn't remember the answer. I right. Didn't hear it. The uh, the problem with the vouchers this time is it was never considered by the legislature. It was inserted secretly in the conference report at the end of the session. And uh, if we're going to consider vouchers at all, it needs to go through the full process. It needs to be in accredited schools. It needs to be subject to the same requirements that our public uh, school system. But more importantly, the public needs to see it. You need to have, you need to have committee hearings. There needs to be testimony. Uh, people need to see people vote on it. And, and that's the only place, the only way it would be acceptable to me, uh, but certainly not outside the specter of special education. What we really need to do is start investing in our schools and start putting money in special education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.